Okay, so here is the um, Titan. <laughs> this thing is pretty huge. Uh, so huge that I had to pull the camera back this far to get the whole thing in shot from head to toe. Um, how huge is he? Uh, here's Cherno Alpha from Pacific Rim, uh, who actually has a similar frame overall. Let's scooch him up to the side. Come on, give him room. And there we go. Yeah, Cherno Alpha, pretty much dwarfed by this thing. Okay, do I have any bigger figures I can compare him to? All right, how about um, the DCUC Connect and Collect figure? Collect and Connect. Still. All right. Still, Stell barely comes up to the thing's shoulder. All right, we're going to have to get pretty drastic here. Okay. How about one of the biggest action figures I own? Drago from Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. There we go. And then there's a little bit of a of a slant. Okay. All right, Drago is almost as tall as him. I mean, if you include his crest, yeah, pretty close. All right. So I guess if you had like a Drago is about the size of a modern day Megazord too. So I guess if you had any Megazords, it might fit with that. All right. So, um, how about my, my highly vaunted uh, Death Egg Robot custom? Yeah, there we go. The Death Egg Robot is about the same height. Which is kind of fitting since he basically is the same thing. A giant mech that a guy can ride. So, there you go. This mech can stand eye to eye with my Death Egg Robot. That's an impressive size. It's, it's almost a full foot tall. Which is nothing, nothing to sneeze at for an action figure. That is huge. It's really, really big is what I'm trying to get at. So, um, you see in the head to toe, so now let's bring the camera a little bit closer. The whole thing won't be in the shot, but it'll allow me to get a little bit more intimate. So here he is. The Atlas Titan in all his glory. The Kinex parts show a little bit, but mostly all you see are the proprietary parts that make it the Titan. I don't know how Kinex managed to wrangle this license, but they did make a pretty impressive looking mech. He's very imposing, he's very big. He's pretty screen accurate considering that this is a build kit and not a uh, and not a standalone action figure. And uh, he can do stuff. Yes, he can indeed do stuff. So, what kind of stuff can he do? Well, um, I'm sure you saw this red stick coming out his back. It's one of those little things. It looks like a standard Kinex part, but it's much smaller. And uh, it basically serves as a handle. When you push up on it, the seed inside ascends to the upper hatch so that the pilot can stick his head out the top door. Look, the mask kind of resembles the Titan's mask. That's kind of cute. Alright. So you lower the seat back down. What else does a mech do? Well, it's a mech. Mechs have pilots, so you can open up the doors and reveal the pilot riding inside. Did I lower the seat all the way? Yeah, the seat is lowered all the way. So there is a the little pilot inside. I mean, it's not like he's holding on to any instruments or anything, but, you know, he's in there. That's kind of cool. So he's in there in the way that the pilot should be riding the mech. Eh. 
This is really cramped. So, how does the mech work? How does he move? Well, he's got ball jointed shoulders. Ball joints. Very good. He's got ratchet joints in the elbows. Let's zoom in a bit on that. See, you can actually see the ratchets. Good 90 degree bend. And nice solid clicks with quite a few detents. So we have uh, plenty of points between full on bent and in the in-between positions. Um, there's a swivel here, because uh, that's a connects peg connected there. And then he has a ball jointed wrist. And the hand, which is one big piece, you don't, there's nothing to dismantle on it, except for the back of the palm, that's one separate piece. It has fingers and a thumb. Can't, can't quite get it to close into a fist. This is the best I can do. There we go. That, that's the closest thing to a fist you can make this thing make. All right, so he has, he has good arms. Moving down. There's nothing at the waist joint except that it's been made to look like it's been given the look of having hydraulics thanks to all those connects parts and if you look closely you can see the thin the thin pegs next to the regular size pegs okay scrolling down to the legs up here at the hip this is what this is a solid connection the moving point is not here it is actually down here somewhat of a weird position and it doesn't have as much of a range as I'd like like hold on let's zoom out a little bit so you can see context um, this is full forward and this is full backwards so you get basically three clicks uh, so you can make this guy look like he's taking a step for to be sure but you wouldn't exactly be able to make him look like he's running then again, I've never played Titanfall. I don't know if the mechs do run. I mean, these things probably, with each stride being like 30 or 40 feet, it probably would, would only need to walk to keep up to any human soldiers trying to run away from it. Uh, the knee joint is another one of those ratchets. It's one of the tightest ones, actually. Um, it can go, it can actually bend backwards, thanks to its range. And gets almost 90 before the connector starts to clash into the decorative part. And then his ankle is a ball joint. Which is cool, except that you can't really make much use of this cool in and out range. Because the hips only go forwards and backwards. They don't go out. What the heck is... Oh, you've got to be... Oh, okay. Oh boy, I dropped the piece on the floor. Yes. All right, so here's a little thing. Um, see, some of the some of the skirt armor is articulated like this, and these are some of the weaker connections. Okay, that holds on decently, but you can knock it off by accident rather easily. It's a bit of a headache. Uh, not as big a headache as these two pieces on the thighs were. These pieces were completely useless. You put them on, they fall right off. They just had absolutely no friction or grip whatsoever. That sucked. So I, I had to glue them on because they're just, there was just no way those were staying on. And they kind of, the way they protrude, they kind of prevent the arms from going all the way to the side. I hate those things. Why are they even there? Was that part of the design on the game? Is that really such an important element? These two stupid panels? I hate these two stupid panels. There's nothing good about them at all. I hate the way they look. I hate the way they attach. I hate them. But besides that, the mech is pretty freaking impressive. Uh, he's huge. He's huge beyond all compare. He has a nice little pilot. He's pretty well articulated. And he just looks fantastic. Um, so he has sticker decals and some painted on details. That's fantastic. Although, if you looked at the instructions, you see this, um, 
Let's zoom in on that. You see that little um, quarter circle there in the paint, um, in the sticker? There was, um, in the instructions, this circle went on to become a half circle here, but it wasn't painted on the actual thing. I think they used prototype shots for the instruction manual, which they did not put on the actual production run of the toy. But that's alright. It's a very small paint detail. And there is there is paint detailing where it would have been difficult to put stickers. Which is a nice touch. It's good to see that they're thinking of us that way. Okay, so I guess there's only one thing left to talk about. And that would be the robot's accessories. First of which is this rather large and impressive gun. If you're wondering why it's kind of attached like this, well, that's because he doesn't really do a very good job holding it at all. Um, I don't know, the, there's just no grip there. Yeah, there's, the robot just doesn't do anything to solidly grip the gun. I mean, it just kind of looks like it's resting there, like he's not even holding it properly. Uh, the only the only real way to get him to to do anything resembling holding the gun is to get him to is to sort of rest it in his hands. Like you have to bend his wrist really far in like this. Then you stick the gun in there. Hope the fingers can hook onto that, and then get this arm involved. Like, oh, see that. Yep, I fired the missile. Come on, come on, get in there. Yeah, like that's... That's basically how you do it. That's the robot holding the gun. It... I mean, if it had a head that could turn, then maybe that would look okay, like he's shooting it over to the side, but... Nah, it's, he's just, it's just kind of resting in there. I mean, what... It's a giant robot. It can run around, punch things, and stomp things, but, you know, a tank can take it out from a distance because a tank is a gun barrel. And, well, if this thing doesn't have any long-range offensive capabilities, like not being able to wield its own freaking gun, then it's not going to really do much good on a battlefield, is it? Like, hey, look at our big, impressive mecha. Watch it punch down this building. Shh. Oh no, our big expensive mecha got taken down by a by an army surplus tank from 50 years ago that had a long range cannon. Um, the gun itself is really nice though. Um, it has a single sticker decal right there. Uh, and it has a firing button. And comes with two extra missiles just in case. These missiles look like Kinect sticks but they're slightly thinner so you can't actually use them as substitute connect sticks. So maybe all the way there at the end. Maybe all the way here at the end because it is it is a little thicker at the top and still has that. So maybe you could be able to attach it to a uh, to something. I don't really see any protruding ports on here though. Maybe here wouldn't not very effective though. I wouldn't try it. Uh, but yeah, gun it fires. It fires a good distance, too. This isn't a wimpy little gun that goes... Pwee. It's a good, good firing gun. It's a good distance. Good distance. So the gun itself is good. The way the robot holds it is bad. Ah, I feel like I'm back in my comfort zone. Because uh, this is the little minifigure that comes with the set. Connects minifigures. And when you get to be my age, the nostalgia really starts to hit you hard. You remember, you remember things how they used to be when you were a kid, and then you look at the way things are now. I mean, there's nothing essentially wrong with this minifigure. He has a good amount of detail. Um, it looks like he he's made to be able to sit on building block bricks with those holes in his legs. And that accessory gun is really cool. It's molded well, and it has that really nice army camouflage paint job. And the articulation is really good, too. I mean, he has a head that moves around. It's a little bit restricted by the shape of his mask, but it still works. Um, he has a waist joint that can turn. 
He has uh, ball jointed shoulders, although they're so deeply set they don't really do much outward movement. He has a, an elbow joint, which I just popped off. Alright, that is a weakness. I notice that this guy pops apart a lot easier than other minifigures I've had. There's a wrist swivel in there. Um, ball jointed hip, although again, not much out movement. And a knee. Yeah. Doesn't really bend 90 degrees, but he has it. Um, I mean, all the points of articulation are there. It doesn't work quite as well as, say, one of the one of the Halo minifigures. Um, here's a comparison between the two. And as you can see, the Halo minifigure is just a tiny bit taller. And um, he has the advantage of not falling apart so easily when I try to mess around with him. And look, look. Oh, I can bend his elbow. I can bend his legs. I can... I can move him around and nothing pops off while I'm demonstrating it. I think it's because this guy's made out of slightly stiffer plastic. So rather than flex around, his joints are just happier to pop off. Alright. Um, I guess I owe you an explanation about why I don't really like the Kinex minifigures, even though they are pretty nice minifigures. Yes, I most certainly do owe you one of those. Alright, this is Wake Angel 2001, signing off.